The Atheist Debates Patreon Project presents Logical Beginnings, Validity and Soundness. Hey, I hope you guys are doing well. Uh, more than a decade ago when I started this channel, I used to post videos that were like my drive home brain dump. I would have a, a 45 minute drive home. So I would put the camera on and I would talk about things. And one of the first things I did was, was the Foundations series, basically about logical arguments. And I'm going to go back and revise some of that stuff for the Atheist Debates Project, specifically because I try to avoid excessive jargon or technical language. Uh, I tend try to avoid citing people by name or philosophies by name because it's the concept that matters. It doesn't matter if Hume said this. What matters is what was actually said. And I remember, I don't know if it was an event that, that Dawkins and I did together or one that I just saw him, but I remember someone asking him once when he used some language that probably the average person wouldn't know off the top of their head. And he was asked if he worried about clarity uh, using words that people might not grasp. And his response was, well, they can go look it up. They can go check a dictionary. He's absolutely right. Um, on the other hand, you could also explain it. And if you're in this position where teaching and clarity and understanding are the primary goals, I'm going to opt for explaining when there's time to explain. Obviously, if we're in a debate, we're not going to start with 35 minutes at the beginning of the debate explaining how logical arguments work uh, before we present a logical argument. You've got to, you've got to come at some basic uh, level of understanding to get started there. And because of that, I thought I would do a couple of videos because mainly... There are people who seem to be a little bit confused about fallacies, but before we can get to fallacies, I need to be able to explain logical arguments and in particular, validity and soundness. Uh, sometimes I use terms that people might not be familiar with. This is one of the videos I'm doing just to present a topic so that I can direct people here and so that you can direct people here. So you can say, you know what? If you don't want to spend you know, forever learning about logical arguments and understanding the 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 structures and the labels for things, um, you can at least come here and get a basic. So I recommend going and studying this stuff wherever you can find it. But step one for logical beginnings is going to be about validity and soundness. And I'm doing this without graphics just to see if we can clearly describe something where people who aren't familiar with it can understand it without having to put up a picture or a chart or a diagram might be a bad idea. If it is, maybe we'll add some in at some point. But here's the nuts and bolts. A logical argument, which I'm going to refer to as a syllogism, is specifically in classical logic, a major premise, a minor premise, and a conclusion. There's connecting terms. And so the prime example is all men are mortal, Socrates is a man, therefore Socrates is mortal. That's, it. That's the baseline logical argument. We're going to make a statement about who is or isn't mortal, then a statement that shows that this specific individual we're talking about should fit that category so that we can then reach the conclusion that that is true, that this individual should be a part of this category. It can all be viewed as set theory. If you're not familiar with set theory and Venn diagrams, you, you can look up the charts where there are circles and we can say, here's the set of all things that are mortal. Uh, there's a subset within there that is all men. And there's a single item within that uh, men category that is in fact Socrates. And so if we've presented that argument, there are two, th two criteria that we look at for every possible syllogism. One is validity, and that gets to just the structure of the argument. The content of the argument is irrelevant to validity. It is just about the structure. The soundness of the argument goes to whether or not the content is true or believed to be true. We're not going to haggle over whether or not we have access to truth, because at the end of the day, it doesn't matter whether X is true or if you just believe X is true. 
because you're going to be deter- you're going to be judged essentially on whether or not you are consistent with the principles of logical argument and whether or not you accept these premises. So validity is all about structure. What do I mean by structure? Well, in classical syllogisms, you have a handful of types of statements. All A are B. That's an all statement. It often gets labeled classically with an A. You could also make the statement, no A are B. That one gets labeled with an E classically. (coughs) Then there's some A are B, which is labeled with an I. And then there's some A are not B, which is labeled with an O. For any given conclusion, for an argument, you're going to have a subject and a predicate. And so by convention, you can say, here's an A type of statement. And if I put it with another A type of statement, I get an A type conclusion. All of the, all A's are B's, all B's are C's, therefore all A's are C's. It's, you can think of it in a lot of different ways, but that's the nuts and bolts of, we're going to make a, a, a three statement. It could be more arguments get longer and more complicated. We're going with the baseline here, but we're going to make some statements. And in that structure, the statements are either going to be all statements, no statements, some statements, and not some statements. And because of that, it limits the, the type of, the, the number of arguments that there can be. In fact, there are 512 possible argument structures, but really there's only 256 because half of them are a copy of another argument with things inverted in a way that doesn't change the validity of the argument. So when you put together a syllogism and you've got a major premise and a minor premise and a connecting term, the classical one, as we referenced before, all men are mortal, Socrates is a man, therefore Socrates is mortal. The structure of that is valid. We know that Aristotle and his band of merry logicians, as I've always said, have gone through all possible syllogistic forms, all 512 of them, or 256 doubled, um, and determined which forms are valid, which forms, if the premises are true, the conclusion follows directly from them, and which ones are invalid. And there are way more that are invalid than are valid. But we know the handful of forms where we can reliably say true premises will lead to true conclusions. That's why the validity of an argument is important. And once you have a valid structure, the next step is to look at what is the content of that structure. Is it true that all men are mortal? I mean, I've heard people say that Jesus was a man and that Jesus isn't mortal. And yet they'll also say that Jesus died, but Jesus didn't stay dead. And mortal seems to imply staying dead. And so the question then becomes, hang on, uh, I accept this premise. All men are mortal. Jesus was a man, therefore Jesus was mortal. The believers uh, that Jesus was not merely a man would say, ah, the problem here, or one of the things they could say, the problem here is that um, all men who are, or all individuals who are merely men are mortal. Jesus was not merely man. And that's how they get around that. That's fine. Because now the question becomes, is it true that Jesus was not merely man? That Jesus was man and divine? What does that even mean? But at that point, we're now addressing the content of the argument, not the structure, We're addressing the content. Are the claims true? Are the claims something that I accept? So soundness is about whether or not the premises are true or accepted as true. And the latter is the the thing. You may not have access to truth. We may not even have the same model of what we think of as true. But if you accept the premises are true and the argument is structured such that true premises lead to true conclusions, you have to accept the conclusion Otherwise, you are in violation of the principles of logic or illogical or I prefer irrational. Um, Because if I believe that X is true, whether it's true or not, 
it would be irrational for me to deny a conclusion in a valid syllogism that uses uh, X as a premise unless I reject the other premise. And this is one of the keys to using logic to make a point. There's a particular type of argument called a reductio ad absurdum. And all it means is, let's assume that this is true and put it into a valid syllogistic structure and see if it leads to a conclusion that we already accept as true or if, we, if, we, if it leads to a conclusion that we think is false. Because if true conclusions or true premises lead to a, a true conclusion and we put them in an argument and the conclusion is false, then we know one of the two premises isn't true. So we've reduced this premise that we assumed to its absurdity. It leads to, you know, um, a, 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 a contradiction, essentially. That's what you're building there. And so that's the point. You could say, let's assume that the earth is flat. And if we assume that the earth is flat, that leads to an eventual contradiction because there could be a conclusion reached that says there will be no point on earth where the sun is regularly in the sky for 24 hours without setting. And then if we go to the South Pole, as is going to be happening, and show that there is a spot on earth that at a particular time of year, the sun doesn't set for a period of 24 hours, then that shows that the premise that the earth is flat is not true. Unless the other premise is wrong. The, the other premise being the one where our understanding of the sun and how it moves is wrong. But if we have, a, if we have an argument where we have premises that we don't accept, we can't do anything with that argument. And we have, if we have an argument that is invalid in structure, we can't do anything with that argument either. If you accept the premises of a valid argument and reject the conclusion, you're irrational. But if you accept, if you reject the premises and accept the conclusion, we have no way of telling if you're rational or not. Because the argument, both in its structure and content, potentially, don't tell us anything at all about whether or not the conclusion is true. This is one of the keys to fallacies. And one of my favorite ways to think about validity and soundness is if you add two even numbers together, you get an even number. Every time. Add two even numbers together, you get an even number. Multiply two even numbers together, you get an even number. If you add two odd numbers together, you also get an even number. If you multiply two odd numbers together, that's when you get an odd number. If you add an even number and an odd number together, you get an odd number. But if you multiply an even and an odd number together, you get an even number. If you mapped out all of those things for both addition and multiplication with even and odd numbers, you could make them syllogisms. You could make them statements in a syllogism and you could use them in a sort of reductio ad absurdum to say, we're not sure what X is, we're not sure what Y is, but if the, uh, if the sum of this is even, and we know that to be the case, then we know if we're adding that, the, that the, and an even number is going to come up if both of those uh, X and Y are even, and if both of them are odd, it'll be even. But if there's an even number and an odd number, we know the, 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 the answer is going to be odd. That is basically a reductio ad absurdum. If you are thinking, I've got two even numbers here, and, you're, and they lead to an odd number uh, in the calculation, then you know you're wrong. This is the key to logic, is that we, we, we developed a structure, whether you want to put it as a, a Venn diagram set theory, or whether you want to put it in a syllogistic form or a truth table, however you want to look at it. We're basically saying, I want to plug variables in here. I want to make sure that the structure is valid before I plug in the actual variables, the actual content that we're going to be uh, evaluating. And that way, once I do, if I know, for example, one of the variables or I know the conclusion, I can infer certain things 
about the others. And I can know when a conclu- when a, a presumption or a premise is not true or should not be considered true because it leads to something that's contradictory. So true premises lead to true conclusions. It is math at its basic uh, is logic put to use. Math at its foundation is logic put to use. The two go hand in hand. Logical truth tables, syllogistic uh, evaluations of structure, it's all the same, just with different content. And the structure is where we deal with validity, and the soundness is where we deal with the content. And that's the basic, basic view of logical arguments. And it sets us up for answering the question, yeah, but why do fallacies matter? We'll see you next time with that answer.